I want to look a little bit more at these seven ups. Poke your neighbor, say, wake up, wake up. Wake up, today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. I'm still breathing. I'm still here. I am blessed and highly favored. Dress up. Now that might not mean what you think it means. Remember, Jesus proved that his kingdom was upside down. This is not what you think. First Samuel 16, 7, the Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Anybody thankful for that? Thank you, Jesus. Wake up, dress up. And my mama never told me to never say this, so I think we should say hush up instead. We should change it to hush up. Lord, fill my mouth with worthwhile stuff and shut my mouth when I have said enough. Listen, listen to advice, Proverbs says. Accept instruction, and in the end, you will be, come on, declare it. I am wise. I am wise. Stand up. Galatians chapter 6, let us not be weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity... Let us do good. When we hear stand up, a lot of things come to our mind. Some of us, we think of loud, boisterous people standing on the street corner with a big sign that proclaims their opinion. I think the kind of standing up that Jesus modeled is quietly going to the cross. If you really want to stand up, folks, in today's rude culture, anybody notice how rude we've been? Be gentle. That's standing up. Be love. Be Jesus. Practice the one anothering of scripture. Consider the one anothering in five categories. Have his mind, offer his welcome, speak his words, show his love, give his grace. But that's not what I'm preaching about today. I'm just catching you up. I'm just catching you up. Number five, anybody remember? No, excuse me. Yeah, that's where we're at. Number five, what was it? Look up. I keep coming back to these words. You get what you're looking for. You get what you're looking for. It's amazing how two people can be in the same circumstance and one can be happy and one can be sad, depressed, simply by how they look at their surroundings. I want to be praise, only praise, only praise, 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 praise is the answer. See the good when others see bad. Find hope where others see none. Look up. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. Philippians 4.13. I can. I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, have mercy. I love the word. Oh, I'm in love with my Bible. I'm in love with my Bible. Last week, I almost exploded reading through Philippians chapter 4 from the Amplified Version. Sharing so much from that class that Eric and I went to last week, it made it so I didn't get a chance to talk enough about Philippians 4. This is a verse that we um, actually, I, I want to say overuse, because we can't use, we can't overuse scripture. But this is a verse that's become familiar. This is a verse that a lot of people use. And it's so easy to take it out of context. So here's the pivot of the context. Some Christians saying that I can do all things through Christ means they can do absolutely anything they want. 
No, no, no. It means that they can do exact, exactly what God wants. <laughs> you know, like the school kid on the playground, full of self-esteem and ambition. One day I'm going to be president. Hey, they might be. You never know. They might be president one day, but this verse isn't about our ambitions for ourselves. It's about God's ambitions for us. It's about the things he's rescued us for. The purpose he has set out for your life and for my life. It's a promise that as you pursue God's purposes in your everyday life, you'll find contentment you'll find peace that it can endure any hardship. I can do all things. If you look at that context, or to put it another way, God will give us everything we need to do the things he wants us to do. And that's good preaching, Pastor Paul. Go ahead. You know, it all starts with a personal relationship with Jesus. And then... Then and only then can we know the contentment that he offers. No more joining the world, worrying ourselves to death. No, 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 no. Philippians 4 glory fills us to overflow with a contentment that can handle any hardship. A young, young new preacher was walking with an older, more seasoned preacher in the garden one day and feeling a bit insecure about what God had for him to do. He was, he was inquiring of the older minister, just desperate for some direction. The older preacher walked up to a rose bush and handed the young preacher a rosebud and told him to open it without tearing off any petals. I should have brought a rose this morning and demonstrated. The young preacher looked in disbelief at the older preacher and was trying to figure this out. What could a rosebud possibly have anything to do with wanting the will of God for his life, for his ministry? Right now, he's seeking this older minister for help. But because of his high respect for this older preacher, he proceeded to try and unfold the rose while keeping every petal intact. Is it possible? <laughs> it wasn't long before he realized how impossible it was to do so. Noticing the young preacher's inability to unfold the rosebud while keeping it in contact, in Hacked, the older preacher began to recite the following poem. It's only a tiny rosebud, a flower of God's design, but I cannot unfold the petals with these clumsy hands of mine. The secret of unfolding flowers is not known to such as I. God opens this flower so sweetly when in my hands they fade and die. If I cannot unfold a rosebud, this flower of God's design, then how can I think I have wisdom to unfold this life of mine? So I'll trust him for his leading. Each moment, every day, I will look to him for his guidance. Each step of this pilgrim way, the pathway that lies before me, only my heavenly father knows. I'll trust him to unfold the moments just as he unfolds the rose glory. Isn't that good? Yes, Lord. How many of us Every day, with our clumsy ways, are trying to figure this rosebud out. Every moment. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Look up. Look up. Shout whatever at the devil. I think I told you before that I did a sermon series entitled Whatever. And I even had t-shirts made. But it's not the whatever my sister used to say to me when I was younger. Whatever, Paul. 
right? It's not that whatever. This is the whatever from Philippians chapter four, verse eight, whatever is true. Think about that. Whatever is honorable, think about that. Whatever is just, think about that. Whatever is lovely, think about that. Whatever is pure, think about that. What are you thinking about? Whatever is kind, think about that. Whatever is gracious, 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 think about that. Whatever is virtuous, excellent, praiseworthy, think about that. Praise, praise, whatever is praise worthy. Praise is always the answer, folks. That relationship that's not working, find something to praise. God inhabits praise. And when he shows up, nothing is impossible. Whatever. No more stinking thinking. Come on, look at your neighbor, say it. No more stinking thinking. I am grateful. I am thankful. I am blessed. Change your thoughts and change your life. Maybe even change the lives around you. This is the secret that Paul is talking about in verse 12. Whether well fed or going hungry, overflow or going without, Christ infuses inner strength, strength for all things in Christ, ready for anything because he's because he empowers self sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. You understand why I couldn't just go past Philippians four. I haven't even got to my sermon yet. This is the power of prayer, folks. Look up. Look up. Look up. Believe when you pray in Jesus' name. My God will supply. Come on, somebody say it. My God will supply. I lift my eyes up, up to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from you, maker of heaven, creator of the earth. Oh, how I need you, Lord. You are my only hope. You are my only prayer. So I will wait for you to come and rescue me. Come and give me life. Come on, somebody. There's a story told of a man who got a permit to open the first tavern in a small town. The members of a local church of this small town, man, they didn't want that bar. So they began to pray that God would intervene. A few days before the tavern was scheduled to open, lightning hit the structure and it burned to the ground. The people of the church were surprised and they were pleased until they received notice that the would-be tavern owner was suing them. He contended that their prayers were responsible for the burning of the building and they of course denied the charge. At the conclusion of the preliminary hearing, the judge Riley remarked, at this point, I really don't know what my decision will be, but it seems that the tavern owner believes in the power of prayer and the church people don't. Wake up, dress up, hush up, stand up, look up. And then this is today's. Reach up. Reach up. You know, I don't know about you, but I got to lift my hands sometimes when I worship. And this is why. This is what children do. They walk up to mommy and they daddy and they reach up. That's that's how I am with Jesus. I'm going to reach up no matter the circumstance. I'm going to for something higher. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1, keep seeking the things above where God is seated 
at the right hand of God. Where God is seated at the right hand. Would you grab your Bibles? Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And once you found it, I'd love you to stand to your feet for the reading of God's word this morning. I've already preached a sermon before I preached a sermon. Colossians chapter 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above. Not on things on the, on the earth. This is the problem. <laughs> For you died. Your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Anybody ready? Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness. This is idolatry. The list of idolatry has changed a little, but it's still idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all that. Come on. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. God cleanse our mouths. Take the coal, cleanse my lips. Here I am. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledgeable, according, excuse me, renewed in knowledge, according to the image of him who created him. <laughs> you might be from monkeys, but Jesus created me. Hallelujah. I am created by a God who loves me where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is all and in all. Christ all in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy, beloved, put on tender mercy. <laughs> Kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must, must, must. You got to forgive. You got to forgive so you can live. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To which also you were called in one body. Be thankful. Be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Woo! Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom. Teaching. Admonishing one another. In psalms. Hymns. Spiritual songs. Singing with grace. Grace. Grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do. In word or deed. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father. Father, through him, Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. It is alive. It is active. It jumps off the page into our mind, into our heart, into our souls, changing us from the inside out. Oh, how we love your word. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. I'm pretty sure that we read through Colossians 3 recently. And I think there's a reason. Lord have mercy, there must have been a reason that the Holy Spirit had us do it again. Hello. Hello. This is what we're doing wrong. We've got to set our minds on things above. Reach up. Reach up, set our minds on things, put off the old, 
too many of us, we keep running to the old. Put off the old. Put on the new. Christ is all in all in all in all. Put on love. Are you spiritually naked? Put some love on. Let the peace of God rule. Let the word of Christ dwell. I mean, what could be better? We have to go to Colossians 3 today. I also thought of Isaiah 55. Go there real quick. Turn to Isaiah 55. <laughs> it came to my heart for a reason. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. Reach up. Let's go there real quick. Isaiah 55. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You who have no money, come buy. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Hello? We're doing this every week. Listen carefully. Eat what is good. Let your soul delight itself in abundance. Isaiah 55, 3. Incline your ear. Come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercy of David. This isn't just mercy. This is sure mercy. Ha <laughs> ha! Sure mercy. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader, a commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know. Nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek, seek, seek the Lord while he yet may be found. Folks, there's going to be a day. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. Return to, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher, higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. Take us higher, God. For as the rain comes down and the snow. Anybody ready for snow? As the rain and the snow from heaven, do not return there, but water the earth. And they make it bring forth and bud. Bloom, bloom, people of God, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and you shall be led out with peace. Anybody need some joy? Anybody need some peace? The mountains, the hills shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Woo! Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress tree. Instead of the briars shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be as the, to the Lord for a name, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Glory. Folks, I don't want my words. Huh. I want God's words. I don't want my ways, words to get in the way. But if the logos of God's word is heard today, and maybe even if the logos of God's word became rhema. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I want you to write down logos. I want you to write down rhema, R-H-E-M-A. And I want you to do a word study. I want you to figure this out for yourself. Study it. But let me simplify it. Logos simply means word. But rhema means that word inspired. That word jumping off the page. 
I don't want my words. I want God's words jumping off the page and into our heart and changing us from the inside out. Oh, continuous, increasing intimacy with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Higher, higher. Reach up. Stronger, deeper, more, more, more Jesus and less of me. More Jesus and less of me. My heart keeps coming back to this three levels of living. Have I told you about this? I think I've told you about it, but just in case I haven't. There's three levels that everybody is living on all the time. There's the satanic level. There's the human level. And there's the godly level. What I want to ask you today is to reach up. The satanic level is returning evil for good. Returning evil for good. In the name of Jesus. Every religious spirit, every critical spirit's got to flee in Jesus' name. Every satanic spirit has to flee in Jesus' name. I don't want to live on that level, anybody? When people do good to me, I don't want to do evil to them. Then there's the human level. Evil for evil. Good for good. Too many of us are living on the human level every day. Somebody's good to us, I'll be good to them. If they, if they, more, if they push my button, I'm going to push theirs. Good for good, evil for evil. But then there's the godly level. And it's returning good for evil. So no matter what that person gives you, you give good, good. Good, good. Because you know what? That's different. And people go, what? And they say, what's different about you? And you say, Jesus, Jesus, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm called. I'm anointed. Reach up. Reach up. And let me tell you right now. None of these ups are possible without this. This table is everything. Without the body, without the blood of Jesus, there's no reason to gather in this room today. This is everything.